Well, hello, man capers, and good morning to you. What are we doing? Another auction, another Honda. This time a little EM. <laughs> Heavy little sods. A little EM500. Auction by as found. So, I guess we need to get on and see if, well, have a look around this thing. Roll the credits. Welcome to the Man Cave. Let the games begin. So, here we are guys, with our EM500 that we bought from auction yesterday. I think this has got to be the most unknown yet, because it don't have a pull string. So, I can't tell if the engine seized, because there's no way of turning this over. No, absolutely nothing about it. Now, I got very, very lucky. If you remember, with the EX1000, the other little Honda I've got, the other silver and red one, I can't remember what number it is, that's down Man Cave HQ. I both got them going with minimal effort. Have I come unstuck with this one? One day I'll buy one I can't fix. I just know it. But we've got to wait for that time, haven't we? There. So, what do we know about this one? It's a 110 only generator, as denoted by the American style plug. And it's 12 volt. So, yeah. I like the little switch. Look at the little switch. It blanks off and opens up the plug sock. That's all that does. So you can use AC plug there. Move that over. And that opens little doorways to the 12 volt. That's all that little switch do. Look, just opens the doorways. See that? Isn't that clever? But there we go. I noticed the amp meter. Let's get a flash on here. There you go. I noticed the amp meter is missing. And there look like cobwebs and all kinds of foreign bodies inside there. So this thing doesn't look like it's... Oh, they look like straw all inside it, look. Yeah, I think this one's been stood a while. It might be a little bit adventurous. What's the petrol tank like in there? Mm, I've seen worse but there's a lot of crud in that whatever all that is in there do that even scrape off or no oh, that's like some sort of coating in there so that ain't all loose and flaky which is good but there yeah one day I'll come unstuck with one of these. I think the first thing to do, like I always do, get all the tin work off it, blow it down and clean it up, just make sure, because there could well be a mouse house in there. You never know. Fluffy might have made a nice little home on the cylinder head. So, yes. Plus, we've got to have all the bits, because we need to put a recoil string in, if I can weigh up how to do it. That might be one of them things where I'm like, how the hell do you put a recoil cord in them? But we'll work it out, won't we? So let's get you up on a tripod and we'll get this thing to bits. If you're wondering, I paid £22 for it off Swatham Auction. There you go. Several people wanted it, but I was the one willing to pay the £22. No, I got that wrong. £24. Oh, yes, yeah, someone else went 22, I went 24, and I got it. But I'm a sucker for a small old Honda. I don't know why. I seem to be gathering a collection of these now. Hmm, I've now got four old Honda generators, all different. So, look like there's a pattern foreman here that I'm going to go for the full set. <laughs> well, there you go. Right, let's get you set up, and we'll get this thing a bit. All right, let's see if we can get him to bits now. See what's going on. There we go. So these things normally come together quite, come together, come to bits quite nicely. They normally do. 
I do like Honda's, I must admit. Where's my little towel? There it is. Oh, crikey. Oh, that's coming. So we've got to take all these tins off. Oh, that's tight. Crikey. Oh, Jesus. Are we even going to get this one out? She's a trifle tight, mister. Let me see if I've got a better fitting screwdriver than that. I do like to have a screwdriver that fit it properly. That feels a bit tighter. We'll try this one. Cool. No. Let's see if we can get some mole grips on it. I don't want to damage the screw head. I would rather just get it started. There you go. There you go. If I'd have tried that with a screwdriver, I would have probably wrung it off or damaged the head, sorry. There you go. It's the first time I've ever had one of these where you got to get a... where you got to get a um, pair of mole grips on one of the screws. Oh, my word. Look inside that. Can you guys see that? Holy moly. Look at that. Look at all that in there. Jesus Ace Christ. Right. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. But it's dry and it isn't full of oil. Do the paddle tap work? The paddle tap is going on and off. Tis indeed. Eh. Uh, Oh, that's made the world of difference. That has made the world of difference. Just a little bit of oil on that petrol tap, right? Let's get this end cover off. I hope we'll get this other side off, look. There we are. There's all our tin work off our Honda. And, well, pretty much the fuel tank can come off as well, can't it? I think that's only how long with the fuel pipe. It is. Now then, we remember my old trick of heating the fuel pipes up. This one's just an overflow, I remember that. All these Hondas have overflows. Let's just heat that petrol pipe up. Just gently. And we should find that will now just pull off. There we go, that's off. There's the underside of our petrol tank. That looks quite clean, actually. Right there. There is our Honda generator with the tins off. Oh my word. Still can't tell if this thing is going to turn over. I've not got a clue. Right. 
I think the first thing we need to do really is get some compressed air and do the fun bit. The bit I enjoy doing is blowing all this stuff out. I do like blowing stuff out. turn over we have a flywheel can we get it will it turn well look at that oh ah. they don't feel a lot of compression in there but we're not going to lose hope with that yet we are certainly not Things can be done, like take the plug out, bit of petrol and oil down there to get out some of the lubricating, and I've just noticed something. It has the original plug socket with it, look. The original plug socket and screwdriver. I don't think I've ever found one of these, but that's still with it. Shall we check the oil on this? Okay. Oh, I can't even undo the dipstick. Let me turn that compressor on. There we go. So I can't even undo the damn dipstick. She's there. So I know we just had it on its side, so we're not going to get an accurate reading at the minute. But if there's some oil in it, that's helpful. So let's just screw this in and see what we've got. I believe there was a little bit on the bottom of the stick. Yeah, she got oil, look. There it come. She's got oil. Not a lot, but a little. That certainly probably be enough to uh, just get us running, to get it hot, then we can change it. Normally I take all the carb off. Cool. The hurts. The Hertz operator is well and truly seized up. You're meant to turn that, and that moves all this to go between 50 and 60 Hertz. That clearly is seized solid. So now we've given everything a bit of a blow down. We can just go for a little bit of lubrication. There we go. That's all that needed, look. There we go. You gotta love a Honda, haven't you? <laughs> right, next thing, I think first order of business, take this recoil off and just have a look if that's something I can actually put a string in easily. There we go. Well, there's our recoil. Showing you that the recoil actually goes on the generator end, look. It doesn't come on the engine end, it goes on the generator end, look. There we are. Strange, isn't it? Here's our string. We've actually got some of the original Honda string still in there. 
Where are my little screwdrivers so I can pick that out? There we go. Let's have a look, see if we can pick that out. We might. And is the, sp is the spring any good? Oh yeah, the spring is, I think the spring is working, look. Yeah, I think the spring is working. Oh yeah, that spring is working an absolute treat, look. That's there now, look, there we are, look. We can pull our string out. For goodness sake, do not let that spin back, Fen, or else you're going to be in a world of hurt. So we need to jam this now so that spring can't go... So that all spin back in now. Well, that ain't the end of the world, but that just means we've got to retension the spring. So we're going to put this here, jam a screwdriver in here, this is how I do Briggs and Strattons, and that'll stop that flying back in. Now we need some new starter cord, and here we go. So we'll pull ourselves off a decent bit of starter cord. The end of your starter cord, nylon. Give them a little heat up with a lighter. There you go. So get in molten with your lighter. Get your stone age fingers on. And rub it till you got a point. See that? That's like a nylon point. Much, much easier to feed back in. He says... We'll come in from this way, look. And here's our starter string, look. There we go. Perfect. So we'll just pull quite a bit of that through. Till you think, yeah, there's absolutely plenty there. <clears throat> Then we snip him off, tie a decent knot on it, I think this may only need the one knot actually, yeah that seems to have got up, look. and now what I like to do, once our knot is in there, I like to cut a little bit of excess off, allow a little bit for slippage, Just heat it all up. There you go. Then again, get your Stone Age fingers and just dab in there. And that'll now stop that knot ever coming undone. There we go. We're pulling with all our might. So now we can let this take it back in. There we go. We're pretty much got a new recoil string in there. There we go. Recoil done. Right, before we go tugging the engine over, we want to just take this plug out. Oh my word, she's been in there some years, mister. That I can tell you, that has been in there some years.
very much. There we go. Let's see what this old plug is like. Well, there we are. We have a plug. She got some straw around it. Right, there you go. Right, first order of business. Before we start doing a lot of pulling. Right, can we see the piston in there or are we on the valves? Ah, I can see a valve in there, look. See in that plug hole, there's a valve. That valve is doing nothing. So this is either got a sticky valve or something's broken in there. That valve's opening, look. See that one there opening? There you go. That valve open and close a lot. See that? This one stuck. So let's just hope. Let's hope that's something easily fixable. <clears throat> so we'll just squirt a bit of my WD in there. Because the valve's open. That'll now run down the valve seat. Found the valve stem, sorry. Alright, that valve is now shut. I've got a screwdriver on it and that's shut. And it's open. And it's stuck again. So this has got a stuck valve. Open. Stuck. Yeah, this has definitely got a stuck valve, so I'm going to have to just keep working this a bit. Open. I don't know whether that's an easy job to get the cylinder head off this. Do you know I've never had a head off one of these little engines? Shall we? For the sake of shits and giggles, just take this heat shield off. Take this heat shield off and just see what sort of mission it is to get the head off. If it's a simple case of four bolts, we'll do it. If it's a bit more advanced, we'll keep working our valve how it is. But yeah, she definitely has a stuck valve. Oh, that's easy enough. Yeah. Go oh, look at all them spiders. See all that stuff on top of that cylinder head? Right, I think we can just... I think we can just take this head off. That don't look terrifically hard. That's only a side valve engine, so... We're not overhead valve or nothing complex like that. So we'll pop this head off. And see if we can get that valve unstuck. Oh, 
I think these bolts are all the same length. Yep. Look at that. There we go. There's the inside of our head. Our head gasket will certainly work again. Yeah, nothing wrong with that head gasket. Looks not blown through. No, perfectly serviceable. Ideally, yes, you should replace it. But we haven't got... We haven't got a cylinder head gasket for a 1960s Honda. So what we're going to do is just give in here a little decoke look. Just decarbonize things a little bit, guys. Decarbonize. Yeah. And the good thing is we've got a screwdriver slot in this valve, look. Which is really good. What's it like in that cylinder? Yeah, this could have done with a recoke, actually. There's quite a bit of carbon on the top of this everywhere. So it's a good job we had this head off. Because we can do a bit of decarbonizing, can't we? Just do a little bit of decarbonizing on the old girl. Let's get all this carbon over here. There we are. There we go. There we are. I think we've got the decarbonizing a bit finished now. So let's put our piston down. Let's wipe that cylinder out in case we've got any dirt and grit down there. Now pump a bit of oil around it. Put a bit of oil in that cylinder. There we go. So when we turn this engine... It's now got a coating of oil. All right, here we go. There we are. This valve, as you can see, is definitely stuck. But it's a good job I've got a screwdriver slot, so we can just turn that. Boy, that is really sticky, that valve. Really sticky. We've really got to get some oil and stuff down that valve to... to get soaking in there. Let it soak all down that valve stem. Cool. See how easy this one spins? Look at that, look. Look how easy that valve spin. This one, oh, not so easy. That is really stiff. Like, really stiff. <sighs> so that valve is... Fully open. Oh, 
So we just got to work him backwards and forwards a bit. Ah, starting to go. It's starting to go. How do you actually get them bowels out of there? Oh, that looks a bit of a nightmare to get them out of there. We'll keep working on like this, get this valve freed off, then we'll be back. All right, 10 minutes of messing around and we've got this valve free as a daisy, look. Spins freely, spins freely and opens and closes. There we go. So what we're going to do now is give this a wipe down and then we're going to spin the, spin the engine over with a drill at high revolutions just to make sure these valves do stay opening and closing and you don't just get this one a bit sticky constantly staying open because that won't be any good to anyone, will it? So we're going to make sure we've got a bit of oil in there. We want that cylinder well oiled. There you go. Right. Let's get a socket on this end snout. Pretty sure we can get a socket on this end snout. Here we go. 13 millimeter. Look. I'll have to just put my attachment out of my windy gun in there. All right, here we go. We'll get a spanner on here and just see which way does this engine rotate when that's running. Clockwise, right, okay. Clockwise, okay. Oh, we like, oh, look at that. Look at that. Valves opening and closing, look. Perfect. Yep. There's our valve opening and closing, look. Perfectly. There we go. Isn't that good? Perfect. And the engine actually feels really, really nice, really smooth. I don't feel at all notchy. Which is good. Now, yeah, let's just blow off around these valves. Blow off in them studs. I think then we need to just ah, do the same thing, clean this cylinder head out. I'll do that off camera, just decoat that. All right, here is the inside of our cylinder head now. We've given him a polish there. So she's going to be poured and polished, relieved and bored. Ah, but will she do 140 in the top end floor? I don't know, we'd better ask the Beach Boys that one, hadn't we? <laughs> right, wipe our gasket down. I don't even know if you would get a new gasket for this. That's too bloody old, I think you might, I don't know. 
Everything spotless. Everything spotless and clean. No pitting, no damage there. All looks good. Crank him back on. Crank him back on. Don't ask me what the torque settings are on this. As I have no diddly squat of a clue what the torque settings are. Really couldn't tell you. So I'll tell you how we're going to ooga dooga them up. Because I remember I undone all them with a little quarter drive ratchet quite easily. So, remember, talk them down in pattern, but we're only sort of nipping them at the minute. We're not sort of going for the tighten up. I'm just getting them in there. Well, that one nipped. There we go. Right. Now we can go for our little, like, torque spec. I reckon that's about right, 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 that's about right. That's about right. Do them but fail. Honestly, it's a generator. It's not going to the moon. There we go. It'll be absolutely fine. So we know our cylinder is all good. Lubricated. We know our valves are working. I suppose really we need to check now if we've got any form of spark on this thing. I do hope I don't have to go pulling flywheels off to get to the points. But there, yeah, right, we've got a blowout now in our electrical box, look. Where all our electricals are. We just want to blow that out. Because I think I've got to get this plugged back in for the engine kill switch to come off. What the hell? Would you not? My compressor is out of wind, look, because I turned the damn thing off, didn't I? If there is an amp gauge missing out of there, there's no wires for or there's no obvious connections. There are two screws been put back in, look. If there was a gauge in there, where does it plug into? Because there's no spare plugs for it to go. Do you reckon they even had one? Or do you reckon there was a blank plate in there? Because if somebody took these... If somebody took the gauge out, why would they have put the screws back in? Hmm, I don't know. Anyhow, we'll get to that in a bit. I just want to plug this thing in and see if we've got any form of spark. Now, which wire is the engine kill wire? I don't know, so we're going to plug them all back in. And hope to God we've got a spark. And if we do, it'll be hopeful. Right, we're plugged back in. Right, the on position is... Oh yeah, there's the kills. There's the engine kill switch, this one here, look. See that one I'm pushing? Oop, you can't see that, can you? If you see, I'm actually pushing a button up here. That's your engine kill switch. And one I'm pushing with my thumb, look. There you go. There's your off. There's your on position. All that does is push that switch, look. And down is off in it, yep. So, in theory, we should now 
have a spark. So let's get our spark plug. My new test spark plug I've got here. Where are we? Here we are. We'll put it on this cylinder. Nip he in that cylinder head. Somewhere. Ah, I'll go in that shield lock. There we go. Can you see that plug? All right. Let's now turn this engine and see if that's got any form of spark. Yeah, look, it's got a spark. I wouldn't say it's the strongest spark. Oh, it is when you get going, look. Can you go see that? Yeah, oh, she got a spark there, look. Excellent. So it's looking hopeful that this little thing will run. It's got our heat shield back on. Ducting, whatever you want to call it. Ducting, heat shield, blower shroud, lots of names. There we go. go that's that back on i do trust my rattle gun fairly but i just like to make sure that i nipped up there we go that good all right i think we can be reassembling this thing now or do we shall we just pop the carb off what do you guys think I reckon we should just pop this carb off, don't you? Just have a look in here. I have the ultrasonic cleaner in here if we need it. Cool. Fuck me. That is tight. There we go. Tapping with a hammer. It often breaks them free. Oh, look at that air filter. A disintegrated air filter. That's one of them where you can leave like... Look at that. That's how the foam air filter has gone. Oh, that's how you know. That's how you know this thing has been sitting for donkey's years. When you can do this to an air filter... Look at that. Look at that. That air filter has totally disintegrated. That's meant to be a foam filter. And it's turned out to be this on the bench. Ah. There we go. Yep. I like finding things out because that's how you know that this has not been run for years and years and years. Good sign. I like it. Right. I've got to charge that compressor back up, haven't I? So I can blow all this out, clean all this air filter housing out. <sighs> right. I think, what's this on here? Is this some sort of cold start valve? 
Are our carb linkages all free? I wouldn't have a clue, you know. Let's have a look and see what we've got in here. Not that familiar with in here, I must admit. I wonder what's under this cover. I really don't know. I guess we'll find out, won't we? All oh, right, that's just a cover with a gasket round it. Okay. Oh, yeah, I think that's a good idea to actually have that carb off. If, for Jesus, however did this carb come off? All right, there's me saying Honda's and all me knows to work on. How the heck? Ah, what are this just? Doesn't that just push off? No, it can't do, can it? Or have we got to have this whole shroud off? Which has got the coil bolt and turn all the coil bolts there. I wonder if I should have to take this one off down the bottom here. Excuse my being a bit vague here, guys. I really don't know how this comes off. I really don't. I'm guessing the whole shroud, blower shroud, come off, which means we've got to take this bottom one out here, haven't we? Cool, that's tight. Yeah, I reckon that's what it is. We've got to have this blower shroud out, I reckon. Oh, it's got that out. Oh, there's another one around the corner here, look. <clears throat> All right, we have another... Bend that wire clip back and take this one out, I reckon. There we go. Right. Now does this shroud come off? <laughs> there we go. All that shroud is now off. Excellent. Is all this throttle linkage free? Nothing seems that free in here. Damn good job we had off. Let me get the air built back up because I've just noticed there's a lot more crap in here to blow out. And yes, we will definitely pop this carb off and make sure she's all freed up. Back in a minute. Right, we are back. Compressor is built up. We're going to give this a blowout again. Right. Now everything seems seized up on this carburetor. We've got our little linkage work in there, but it all seems nothing seems to work very freely on it, which is not good. So we're just going to crack this linkage off. And make sure that's not seized up in this linkage. Which it isn't. So it's obviously, yep, that carburetor is seized solid. Oh, we've got to disconnect this end. What have we got to disconnect on this end? That's just another overflow. Ah, we have a little choke mechanism here, look. Governor mechanism, do that pin pull out. No. How does this come off, guys? There's got to be a way that comes out of there, isn't there? 
Hmm. I thought that just pulled out. Oh, it does just pull out. Look, there we go. Oh, that just holds that. Right, I see. Okay. So our carb is off. There we go. There's our carb off. Let's take this back plate off. There we go. Remembering which way it goes. And our carb is absolutely seized solid let's get in this bowl and see what that looks like in this bowl oh look there's dust there is dust in there yeah oh my god that actually stinks of varnish this thing has not ran, I can guarantee it. Even the damn float has seized up. This thing has not ran in 30 years. I can promise you that it absolutely reeks. Absolutely reeks. Ah, there we go, that's come out. There is our little needle and seat look. See that? Look at all the gunk and crap around that. So all of this, ah, and we haven't damaged anything, that's good. So all of this can now go in that ultrasonic. Oh, if there was smell of vision and you could smell this. Oh, man. This is style four star if ever I smelt it. That's not that modern ethyl, ethanol based crap. This is style four star. Cool. Jesus. Even the linkage is all seized up on the top here. Before we go ultrasonic bath on any of this, we need to get all these levers freed up, I think. We definitely need to get this all freed off. That butterfly is seized solid. I'll tell you, this is this is a bad one, guys. This is a particularly bad one. You know that's bad when even the petrol in it don't catch light anymore. <laughs> that's how you know you got a bad one. Come on, she's starting to free up. Oh, we hope it is anyhow. Don't you break on me. Come on, get back down there. I'm having to give this quite a bit of stick to get it to work. Well, I'm going to have to have a play with this carburetor for a few minutes just to try and get this butterfly free. Then we'll be back because this video is getting plenty long enough. Right, 
It has been a good hour or so. We have our steamy water. Our carb has been through the ultrasonic bath. I have managed to free all them off. Trust me, they were a nightmare to get off. An absolute nightmare. I ended up having to undo these little screws and take the butterflies out. Yeah. And then pull the whole shaft out. Now, free as a whistle again. But believe me, they were not easy to free off. This is by far the worst I've ever done. But as you can see, it's a Nicky carb. And it's actually come up really, really well. I think I'm going to try and get that center jet out because you can guarantee that's plugged. Even though it's just had half an hour in this bath. Oh, look at the rubbish running out of there, look. Yeah, that softened all that gunk up what was in the bottom. I say this carb bowl was bad. Let's take our basket out because there should be a little needle in there. There we go. Take our little basket out. Here's our little needle and seat, look. Put E back down there. There's our drain tap. And there's our bottom nut. Right. Oh, I've seriously got to trim this video down because it is going to be really, really long. And a lot of you aren't going to want to watch a two-hour video, for goodness sake. So I'm going to have to do some serious trimming of this video. But there we go. Just thought I'd show you what that's like. Now the carb is out. I'm not happy with that centre jet. That don't look like that's got a hole through it to me. Yeah. I don't like my chances of getting that out. I hate taking them out because they normally always bloody chew up and break off. They're horrible things. But we'll get you in the tripod and have a look. All right, let's see if we can get that out of there. I'm not really liking our chances of that ever coming out of there, but we'll put a yeah, where's my small screwdriver? Here we go. Here's a small one. Will this slightly larger one go in there? It does. All right, brilliant. There we go. Come on, you little swine, out you come. Right, there we go. There we go, she's out. Right, is that or is that not plugged? Yep, totally plugged. I can see absolutely nothing. I'm holding it up to the light and you can see absolutely nothing through that. So we need to get a little pin or a wire, something to poke through it. Let me get that poked through. So here we have got the bristle of a wire brush through it. Give her a little spin about. And holding it up to the light, I can see daylight through that now as clear as day so we have that sort out let's just blow a bit of wind through it oh yes that's come right clean now alright so we can really be putting this car back together I'm just going to put a little bit of a little bit of my 3 in 1 in there before I go dropping him in. There we go. Right now we can give it the final tighten up. With this screwdriver. 
There you go. Just nip it. You don't need to give it a hooga dooga. I am really gutted about that damned O-ring breaking on there. But we're going to put it back together anyhow. And just see how it comes. Right, I need that little needle and seat now, don't I? Let me get this car back together. If not, this video is going to take forever. It won't take long, will it? It just won't take long. Back in a minute. So we're getting our carb back on. It's all back together. We've got to push that on there, haven't we? If you remember, there was a little spring clip. Somehow went on the back there because I pulled it out. How did that little spring clip hold on? That just went there. And then somehow... I ain't got a damn clue how that went. Nor did that just go through it. Oh, I believe that went right through that. So let's get some pliers and see if we can get that back through. Don't look the easiest of jobs, but we'll see, won't we? We will see if we can get that back through there. Ah, there we go. Look at that. There we go. Our overflow need to come back out through this hole down the bottom here. There we go. While that was going through the ultrasonic cleaner, I took the liberty of making up a new petrol pipe as well. But our old one, if you remember, broke. So I've got a new bit of petrol pipe I've put through this original sleeve. <clears throat> so we can put the little spring clippy on. Push heat all the way home. There we go. Put our little spring clip back down that's there has that kinked that petrol pipe oh no there we go now oh, there we go we are solved the petrol pipe and this one's the one that just go on to the tank through that original sleeve we need to hook this over the top of this so this comes over there and i think when we move this now that should pull that It'll work. Yeah, this will work. I mean, the governor's against it at the minute, but yeah. Yeah, because the governor will hold it that way, won't it? And then when you pull that, that'll pull it. Yeah, that'll work. Should do anyhow. Right. Let's get our plastics back on this. And then we can get the tin work back on and get it reassembled. All right, blow a shroud back on. Let's get our spark plug back in. Just giving that a little bit of Three in one in there, just so that cylinder ain't dry when we pull her over. Shouldn't be. Remember, we are replacing nothing. This is the thing, we're not just we're not just doing a video on replacing a load of bits. We're not even replacing the spark plug. We are literally gonna clean up what's there and see if we could get it going. Without any expenditure, apart from that little bit of fuel pipe. Right. Recoil is on. That's going to pull the engine in it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, whoops, that's pulling that over. I think we can be getting our tins back on. 
put a handle on this. See if we can get some sort of fire. Oh, you. Oh, no. I think we say I'm an idiot. No, nope. I am an idiot, but fuel pipe needs to go back on that fuel tank, don't it? And this one is just an overflow. Where does that fuel tank come? That must come this side. So if we put our fuel pipe on. Little wire clip thing. Put the little wire clip on. Do it right. There we go. Get our fuel pipe well and truly home. There we go. That's pretty much how that needs to be. Then we can put the end covers on. All right. Let's get this string through the hole. There we go. Make sure our wires are all connected. Little black wire. That needs to go a bit further home, I'd have thought. There you go. This one's plugged in. That's plugged in. Get our little try of nuts and bolts. <sighs> And see if we can get these back together. Oh, hang on. Hang on. We haven't put. Hang on. We haven't. We ain't connected the choke or nothing up. Look. Oh, dear. Now, that ain't no good. Look at that. This is what you get when you don't take note. We've got to unplug him again. That's got to come over the top of that. Look. There we go. Yeah, that got to come over the top of that. And then that can go on. That's got to come up. So put this right upright. Over through there. Back down. There we go. There we go. All right, let's get this bolted back up, guys. There's three and four. I'm only doing these loose at the minute. The whole thing is still loose. I'll tell you why, because I've had this before. That if you go tightening them up as you go, nothing will line up. So we'll get the end caps on first. Get them on loose. Yeah, get them on loose. Then you'll find they will all line up. Another one there. Another one gone in the bottom. And we just lift our tank up to meet them. That's three. There's four, right. Now them ones are done. We can buzz all these up. There we 
we go. Marvellous. Amazing how that's tightened that up. Now we can get our wires plugged back in. Look. There we go. Make sure our choke works. It does. Remember, this is just an overflow. Excellent stuff. All right, I think we can be getting our side covers on, can't we? Get this actually looking like a Honda again. I say this is by far the worst one I've done. I can categorically say this is definitely, definitely the worst one I have done. And believe me, I've done quite a few of these little Hondas now. But this one's just, oh, yeah. I've never done one quite so um stood up as this one. I think this has literally been years. 30 years, I think. I've seen that petrol before and... That's not ethanol petrol, that is style unleaded. Believe me, that was style. No, that was style four star, sorry. Not even unleaded, that was four star. And they haven't made four star since 1980, what, 86, 87, something like that? When they stopped four star? No. 90, wasn't it? 90, oh, what year did they stop four star, guys? So I think they bought unleaded in, didn't they? About 95, 96. But what year they actually finished four star, I don't know. I passed my driving test in 91 and I don't think you could get four star then. I think we was on unleaded then. But I do remember buying four star from my little... Honda P50 monkey bike when I was 10 year old. I had a little P50 Honda. And I used to go at the petrol station on my push bike. With a two litre Coke bottle or something like that. And then very often I had a petrol can so I couldn't carry it. So I used to go up there with whatever container I could find and ask old Philip to get me 20 pence worth of petrol, which he would oblige and do. Oh, excellent. All right, I think we have checked the oil, haven't we? So there's oil in it. I think really we can be putting some petrol in this thing. Well, yeah, put some petrol in it and see if it starts so we're on the off at the minute take a strainer out you don't want that strainer in there quite for the minute let's put a little bit of the good stuff in and watch it all leak out look We don't put a lot in, only about a pint. There you go. We've got about a pint in there, I think. Now, I know I always say with a Honda, if they don't start first time, they're not going to. Even I'm not convinced this one's going to start first time. I'm not 100% convinced that's going to start at all. I expect us to have a petrol leak. We've turned the petrol on. Can I see anything dripping underneath it? Onto the tray in there? So far, that looks quite damn, quite damn dry.
and I can't pour all that crap in that exhaust. Look. I haven't put the air cleaner back on. We're going to run it without that. Well, I say run it. Even I'm not convinced this one's going to go, guys. <laughs> right, I need to get some form of pull on there. Have I got a pull handle? If not, I'll have to just put a bit of stick around it or something. So I don't know whether I've got a... I don't know if I've got a pull handle. No, I haven't. Let me find something to tie around here. And then we'll go from there. And see if we can get this thing to fire off. Alright, here we go. We have a stick. So let's just put a stick around here. Just temporary till I get a handle. I aren't worried about having to retract right into the machine. I aren't too worried about that at the minute. That can hang. We only want to see if it run, don't we? There we go. We've got a string on. So, don't hold your horses for this one, because I can't see that's going to go, because she was bad. Let's have a look. Come on, string, get back in there. What's wrong with the recoil? Recoil's not going back in. I have no idea why. Maybe I didn't have the spring wound quite enough. Now. Now, we have a problem with that recoil. I'm going to have to take that recoil back apart and see what's wrong with it. So, we have the recoil working again. Turns out, I haven't quite got this trued up, and that was nipping. That's all it was. Oh, I see a drip. We've got a little drip on there. I had a feeling we might. I think we can be getting this end cover back on again. So let's speed our rope through the hole. Get this end cover back on. Not forgetting our petrol linkage again. And not forgetting to connect our cables up. There we go. So she's connected. This petrol tap. Ah, we need to hook this back in there, don't we? Come on, there you go, that's back in. Push the clip down. There we go. It's getting dark outside. Plug in. Come on. There you go. We're all plugged in. All right, let me just button this end back up. And then we'll see if we've got any sort of start. That petrol drip, I'm not sort of majorly concerned about that at the minute because I've had this before and the next morning they've dried themselves up. So you can never tell. It might just be because everything's dry that just needs to swell up a little. So we're not too worried about that little petrol drip at the minute. Yeah, we'll leave the side side covers off while we give her a while we give her a test start. We'll just leave them off and see what happens. I can't see this is going to run if I'm honest.
There you go, well buttoned up. Right, take two of will this start. So we're on the on position, which should be, ah, choke. Where is our choke, or is that automatic? I wonder if that's an automatic choke. So far, we aren't getting nothing. Now, we might have a carburetor issue. So we definitely had a spark there, unless where I've put all that oil and stuff in the cylinder that's fouled the plug up. So we haven't got a clean spark plug now, and that's all gummed up. That's possible. Because if that was wet, she wouldn't spark, and then we wouldn't have no run, would we? Yeah. Tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna put a squidge of petrol down that plug hole. Just to see if we can get anything out of it. And it's tipping back because we want to get it in the cylinder. Whoop. There's two or three drops gone in there. You don't want too much. You only want to see if that's got a little bit so it will grab bark off. So let's put him back in here. All that plug cool down too much. All right. All right. Let's see if we get anything. There. It runs. I think we have a carb issue. Most definitely, look. We've got drippage everywhere. Yep, we've got a spark. I think we have carburetor issue. Yeah. I think that, yeah, should work. Because that carb is clean and the main jet is clean because I've been through it. And, oh, I tell you what I didn't do. I didn't take the uh, mixture screws out of that carb, did I? They could be plugged up in there. Ah, you idiot. Right, anyhow, we're going to leave this video because it is plenty long enough. You've seen this thing bark off just the once. So we know it runs. We know it's got a spark. I think I do need to sort this petrol leak out. I think I may have to actually buy bits and get a carburetor kit for it or see if I can get a carb kit for it. And yeah, we'll go from there. But, that's going to be it for this video. There's our little EM500. You did just see her bark off. I know it's a long video, very anticlimactic. But I, um, I hope that that's all right. I hope that's going to work for us. Right. I will see you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye for now. Let's turn this off. Petrol off. Aha! <laughs>